Well, what's going on, coaches and athletes? Welcome to True Life Sessions, and I want to personally welcome you to UW, University of Washington. We are here. We are in the building. I mean, this is this is it. Like, this is it. This, I'm not going to say that this is my favorite location, cause, <laughs> but I'm a little biased. This is pretty legit. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. pretty legit. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I have an amazing guest, and I don't want to take any more of the time. I want to let her speak and allow the Lord to speak through her to you. Mm -hmm. So, Maria, will you please introduce yourself, what you do here at UW, kind of where yeah. you're at in your life, what sports you play? Yeah. So, my name is Maria, Maria Gray. I actually don't go to UW anymore, <gasps> but sh <laughs> they don't know that yet. <laughs> um, I just finished my undergrad this this past, past fall. Okay. So I'm I graduated in sociology and a minor in Spanish. Super random stuff that I, I don't know if I'll really use. <laughs> Maybe Spanish. Yeah, um, totally. And what else? So I I just finished, and right now I'm in a weird in between where I do want to come back to UW. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, kind of fortunately, um, I tore two uh, both of my ACLs. Oh, both. Uh, yeah, both of them. Yikes. Yeah, separate times. Um, oh, so no. I have a lot of eligibility left. Okay. So I'm planning on or thinking about praying about coming back in the fall to just play one more last season. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm just training, working, um, kind of enjoying myself, yeah. doing a little little ministry as well. Um, and then I also play with the national team for Jamaica, so I do get to go back and forth. I uh -huh. just came back from a trip, and then I'll go again in April to play. Wow. So Weird I'm just flex, living my best okay. life. Weird <laughs> flex. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. Um, how was training there versus training here? Because right now it's raining outside. Absolutely. Is it nicer I was there, obviously? living my best life. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. I was um, just getting to walk outside and not have to have, like, a temperature change. So, yeah. You know, you walk outside, it feels exactly the same as it oh did my gosh. inside. Um, so, yeah, here I'm, like, raincoat, long pants. I would be crazy to take off my sweatpants <laughs> when I train here. But, wow. Oh, Jamaica is just, it was so nice. We trained, we trained, and it's, like, 10 minutes from the beach. So okay. if we had time off, we'd just run and kick it in the sun. Yeah. Wow, so, I'm so jealous. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta recuperate my thoughts. <laughs> I've got so many more questions because, unfortunately, I think you're the first soccer player to be on this unfortunately, podcast. Unfortunately, that's very unfortunate. I'm a soccer player. I don't know if to, I know I talk about it a lot. I was a football player, but I was a kicker, so not. You were born for soccer. That's, yeah, I, that's I played soccer yeah. originally, and I am just so sorry to all of my soccer people in FCA <laughs> that this is the first soccer player that I've had on, on here. I know, I know, this is my bad. Um, but okay. I want to talk more about that, but we got to get into it. We just got to get straight For into sure. it. So how long have you been with FCA? Did you do it here at UW? Did you do it any time before that? Talk a little no, bit about that. I actually was involved with AIA before, okay. so my first like few years, and then just this past year, uh, FCA became more present. And so I was asked to do an internship just uh, in October. Okay. And it was like super last minute. They're mm -hmm. like, some people dropped out. If you're interested, we'd love to have you. So I just, I said yes. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so now I've been more so involved with FCA, getting to serve with the college ministry a lot more. Um, so I'm kind of a baby. I, I'm getting to know some some things as I go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we're glad to have you. Yeah, we're glad I love to have it. You. So in our ministry theme, in the month of March, we're talking about this this idea that you are chosen. Uh, mm -hmm. You have everything in Christ, and specifically, Christ has chosen you. Um, I wanted to ask you just a couple questions. Being a soccer player, playing on the biggest stages in the soccer arena, mm -hmm. how does it change the way you play or act on and off the field to know that God has chosen you? Yeah, um, I, when I think of you are chosen, I always think of of uh, the verse and the and even the parable where Jesus is saying like many are called but few are chosen. Mm -hmm. And so immediately I'm like okay, so many people are called but a lot of people reject the invitation mm -hmm. to you know to the banquet. Yeah. Um and so when I realized like okay, the fact that I know who God is and I think about him all the time and I want to help others know Jesus mm -hmm. means that my very purpose for even playing soccer means that it's for it's a tool and mm. i always see it as a tool like i benefit because i love soccer yeah but god uses it to touch so many people mm. so i am chosen even in my sport um to use it as a tool to talk to people and i'm so blessed to have gone gone to many nations mm -hmm. um through soccer and i meet so many people from other teams like the italian team the little caribbean team yeah. and the england team national the u.s team like yeah. and i meet so many girls and through hotels and all these trips and stuff and at the end of the night we're talking about god so wow. i was like the cool to think about how god works like that yeah. um so yeah soccer is a tool i'm chosen really to use that mm. to say hey jesus loves you 
um, and even you are here to play soccer, but for a reason. Mm. And it, it's God's given talent to you. So, so many ways that I can see, like, yeah, wow, I think I'm really called to just preach the gospel. Yeah, preach <laughs> and the gospel. Come on. Through soccer. Yeah, that's yeah. so good. Wow. Man, I'm just sorry. That's, that's amazing. Uh, what I think that you touched on right there that was super – amazing and I, I think gets undermined a lot in culture especially like culture christianity mm. is this idea of like god's called me to this and i love it yeah like i love to play soccer yeah. but also in partnership with loving to play soccer i'm also called to love people while i play yes. soccer yeah. and almost this like i think a lot of people think like the life with god is restricting of freedom mm. like to live god's way is to live under this like just you prison. know just prison <laughs> yeah. Of, yeah prison of this but what you're talking about is something very different. It's like, actually, I'm more free and I come actually more alive yes. when I pair my passion mm -hmm. with my love for Jesus. Um, you want to talk just a little bit about that, like where that came from, maybe like in your childhood, mm -hmm. like you kind of just like where God kind of connected that for you um, as a young person. Yeah, just my, my faith, like coming yeah. to my faith. Yeah, I actually grew up Christian. Okay. Um, earliest. Yeah, earliest memories I know. We we went to church and mm -hmm. we weren't like I used to hate going to church sometimes when yeah. I was younger. And it's funny to see like now I've like I can't not be in the house of God <laughs> now, yeah. which yeah. is so funny. Um, and my mom would be the one that would like pull the family, mm -hmm. like drag the family to church. So that was most of my life. Um, and then it didn't come until high school when honestly I was I was a my high school like partied a lot at a young age mm -hmm. so that was kind of what i started to do was i wanted to party mm -hmm. but even when i did like i would be under the influence and then god's voice just got louder <laughs> wow it, like literally i remember moments in parties when mm -hmm. i would god would be just saying like this you're not meant for this here and mm -hmm. one person even he was probably like you know way more under the influence than i was mm -hmm. and he sat down next to me and he's like you don't you don't belong here maria and oh, wow. I was like, you don't know who, we, what you're, you're being used by God right now. <laughs> like, <hold laughs> and on. yeah, so it's just stuff like that where he would either speak to me or through mm -hmm. people and to the point I couldn't bear it anymore. And I was wow. like, this is just not my life. I'm not mm -hmm. called to this. And um, so I began to seek God more. And that was like the beginning of an amazing journey to see like, who am I? What's my identity? I mm -hmm. think God's calling me to help others in the same situation um and even understand like the depth of the kingdom of god and mm -hmm. and i think there's so much more to even just like god's love is good but there's like so many more amazing things that we can discover about mm -hmm. like life and his power and authority and all these amazing things um so i'm i'm, I'm happy for that journey i'm happy for that even that one person in that yeah. party to just like yeah wake up Maria. yeah, yeah. I think what's so beautiful is you're coming right back to the topic that we're talking about mm. is God chose you and he continued to pursue you yes. and continued over. to call out to you and was like, and hey, hey, yeah. hey, 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 still and here. I think, yeah. Yeah, okay, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Still here. Still love you. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that could be really reassuring for a coach or an athlete on the right, other side yeah. of the screen who may be sitting in a life situation or in a season in their life where they're caught up in something or maybe their situation around them doesn't look like God's calling them, but to to, for you to speak to them, now you being that person mm. that spoke to you, speaking to them yeah. and saying, <laughs> yeah, hey, works. like, God, you don't belong there. Mm -hmm. Like, whoever you are on the other side of the screen, like, that situation doesn't define you. That, that season doesn't yeah. define you. Like, God still chose you and is still choosing you every yeah. day. And that's what's so beautiful about the gospel of Jesus is I didn't choose him. Right. <laughs> I did not choose yeah. him. You didn't choose him. I was him. minding my business. Yeah, I was doing my own thing. <laughs> yeah. Romans 5, 8 says when I was actually his enemy, mm, yeah, wow. he still died for me. Yeah. And like what a beautiful, beautiful testament to, to God's goodness and his grace mm -hmm. in your life. And hopefully for somebody on the yeah. other side of that, that screen, maybe you can just practically talk about that transition in your life. Like, okay, I'm chosen. I'm not meant for that life. What did it look like and what were some like tips and tools and just things that you did to help move deeper into what God had called you to? Yeah, um, I would say one of the hardest things, but the most important thing for me was understanding that, um, like the earlier verse I mentioned, many are called, but few are chosen, which mm -hmm. means that in the beginning of that time for me, I did have to say, I had to accept the fact that I might be lonely in this mm -hmm. walk. Um, wow. And the amazing thing about that is, although there are few that are chosen, it's a lot. Like God will, yeah. God will make sure that they locate you. Mm -hmm, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So I did have to like kind of say, like, okay, God, I'm willing to be alone if it means that I'm walking with you. Mm -hmm. um, and then once I made that decision, He sent people to help uplift me and hold mm -hmm. me to that um, and walk with me in that faith, that faith walk. Um, 
so yeah i i began to seek god more in the word and that's Mm -hmm. i just had to prioritize the things of god more than even soccer like i was like wow sport is my identity um yeah so i was like is my life revolved around my sport and is my um how i feel and how i affirm myself based on how good i play Mm -hmm. or is it what what god's word is telling me Mm -hmm. so then like life might be going like this but Mm -hmm. like because of god's word i'm like Mm -hmm. this throughout those situations um so those are some things i had to accept like separation Mm -hmm. but but god didn't call us to be connected to the world honestly Mm -hmm. he did call us to be separated but he will put people in your life to be able to walk with you in that yeah um and then yeah seeking god was the most important thing Mm -hmm. like learning to love prayer again Mm -hmm. um just falling in love with his presence Mm -hmm. and it was hard it takes like it's more of an acquired taste, but it's it's yeah. something that yeah. changes yeah. your life. Once you acquire that taste, it's yeah, like yeah. no one can shake you from it. You're yeah, like, yeah. Do you like olives? No, I don't. <laughs> but until I ate it seven times, it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? Olives are okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're getting yeah. better. They're getting better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think, I think too, like you're preaching to the crowd. Like this is a bunch of athletes we're talking right, to. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what you're saying is the walk of God, the life of God takes practice. Yes. That's like, if you look at Paul's writings in the New Testament, he always relates to an athlete. Mm, He's like, I'm running the race. And uh, at the end of Philippians, he says, I'm going to, he said, please put into practice the things I teach you. Mm. Like even Paul's saying like, hey, you may try to pick it up right here and just be like, okay, I'm going to change. Right. 180. Here we go. This is it. Mm -hmm. But it just takes so much more than that. These these rededication, these like steps, one step, one step, one step. And that encourages me because that's God saying like, hey, like I'm patient Mm. and I'm willing to walk with you in that. And even if for a season you are isolated because Mm. you're choosing one way when everybody else is choosing the other, God's going to say, I'm never going to leave you and I'm never going to forsake you. you. And I think that's that is so good. Hopefully for somebody to hear that, that maybe the Holy Spirit's speaking into you right now saying it's time for a change. It's time for a change. You're chosen. chosen. You matter to me. And I want you to live a life that's fully, fully free. And those who are free are, are free, free indeed. indeed. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Come Let's, on. Go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So where are you heading? So you're, you're hoping to come back. Uh, are you bit playing in any big tournaments coming up with Jamaica? I think I know one in off the top of my head, but I want you to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. So quick, I guess the uh, run through what will, be, what will be coming in the future mm-hmm. is I'll be going back in April. Okay. And that will be the second half of uh, the CONCACAF qualifiers. Okay. So this qualifies us for the CONCACAF tournament, which mm-hmm. is when like USA, mm-hmm. Mexico, the big teams play. Um, so we play like all the small Caribbean teams. Mm-hmm. And then um, we play, uh, actually, who are we playing? Cayman Islands in the DR mm-hmm. in April. And if we end up on the top of that group stage, then we'll go to the big CONCACAF. And then, of course, the top five teams from CONCACAF will go to the biggest tournament, which is the World Cup. Yeah. So on, right? that's the goal. That's Wouldn't the that goal. Wouldn't that be crazy? That'd be amazing. Oh, yeah. man. I'd, I would be sitting at my house on my couch <laughs> going, yeah, I yeah. That person. yeah. And I was blessed. We actually went for the first time in 2019. So wow. I got to go to the World oh, Cup. Oh, wow. You got thing. to go to the end. Yeah. yeah. It was, oh, my gosh. That was amazing. I got to play against Marta. I played against mm. uh, Sam Kerr. She's mm-hmm. one of the best players currently right now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we hope to just do that again. That is so yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. Wow. Congratulations. That's sick. As, <laughs> a soccer, as a soccer guy, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> I'm like fan guy. Fan that Yeah, sure. Whatever. Whatever. Fangirling. But uh, let's just wrap it up. I, I just want you to just share maybe just a word of encouragement to any coach or athlete out there that's just maybe they feel like they need to make a change or yeah. they're trying to understand what does it mean to be chosen. Is there right. anything you feel like you should tell them that would yeah. encourage them? Yeah. Um, definitely I would say that alluding to what I said in the beginning is that sport and your your job, your gift, your talent, your skill is a, is a tool. Mm-hmm. Um, we're here for a short time on earth. Yeah. And as much as amazing as life is, God, Jesus came to give us abundant mm. life. So he wants us to enjoy it, but to understand that it is a tool to make sure that everyone understands who Jesus is mm-hmm. and we can all, you know, be with the father in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're getting caught up in your skill and you're getting caught up and suddenly the thing that God called to be a tool is causing you stress and pain and mm-hmm. anxiety. It's the, we're switching the the roles of those things Mm -hmm. and it should always be like this is for god so it should always be a blessing to Mm -hmm. us um should always be something that is uplifting to another person Mm -hmm. and so allow that just remind us that this is a tool that god is using 
um, be glorified in it, God. And I always say, like, God, as I step on this field, may people see you. Even as I'm playing, may people see you. And I don't know how that's possible, but I know God can do it. <laughs> yeah. And um, and, th- and then that goes into the next thing is, like, when it comes to the, for players, um, when I step on the field, God says that he's given us power and authority, mm. even in the words that we speak. When I step on a field, I've been injured twice. So now I know how to pray. Yeah. I pray differently. I say, God, I cover myself in the blood of Jesus mm-hmm. because I know that that carries a lot of power. Like mm-hmm. I am protected for those that have been injured. Like don't fear injury anymore mm-hmm. because God's word says that when we claim it, it can be true. And then we can also dominate even as a player yeah. because that's just who we are. Yeah. <laughs> we just carry a lot of favor. Yeah. So when I step on the field, I say, Lord, as I step on this field, I'm dominating. Yeah. Um, and so God gives another like level of confidence mm. in that. So I would say those two things, remember it's a tool, but also like dominate in that tool, be the best in that tool because God has called us to be great. And um, we stand out, we, we stand out if we understand that if Jesus was walking on this earth today mm. and we could see him, he would stand out for oh, sure. Oh, he would. And he's in us. Yeah. So let's stand out too. Yeah, and that's I it. love that. Yeah. I love that. Think of the term humble beast. Humble like, beast. Yeah, you could be a humble beast. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get it mixed up. Like, Christians ain't like, Christians don't hey, have to like, be, yeah. Like, I'm going to go out there and get it. Oh, yeah. But if I hurt you, I'm going to be like, hey, man. Yeah, get up. You're good. Good. <laughs> good. Yeah. good. Okay, well, let's wrap it up. Coaches and athletes, we are so thankful for you. We are praying for you. And, hey, keep your eye open for this chick, okay? She's going to be doing <laughs> amazing, amazing things. And, like she said, the blood of Jesus is on her. And wherever mm. she goes, the God is in her. And that's the same for you. You are chosen. You are loved. And we believe in you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much Amen. for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, this yeah. is awesome. Hey, we have to close down here at the University of Washington, but hey, we're so thankful that you joined us. We'll see you next time. Bye.